Now joining us, college football insider Brett McMurphy, who's been on the program a few times on the Deseret First Credit Union Hotline. Brett, welcome back to BYU Sports Nation. You're obviously not a fiddler in the roof. Fiddler on the roof fan, or you would have sang tradition, but uh, good to be back with you guys. Absolutely. Absolutely. If you feel so inclined uh, during this interview to do that, you're more than welcome. Absolutely. Um, let's ask you our <laughs> question of the day. Uh, Utah is a new uh, athletic director. The hope is that BYU and Utah will continue to play in football. That's the expectation, but who knows? How would you sell the BYU versus Utah rivalry to Mark Harlan? Well, actually, I know Mark very well. Um, he was down here in Tampa at USF, where I still uh, reside. I have not had the opportunity to ask him about the BYU rivalry, but next time I talk to him, I certainly will will do that and try to tweet it out if it's on the record. Um, you know, the challenge, obviously, for for BYU is that Utah can look at this as a, a can't-win game. If they win the game, well, they were supposed to because BYU's not in a power conference. And if, if Utah wins... Um, you know, it's, excuse me, if Utah wins, there's nothing they can gain out of it other than bragging rights. But if Utah loses, it actually hurts them more. So, um, you know, I can see both sides of this. Certainly, I hope these things continue because that's the thing I hate about conference realignment is, you know, great rival rivalries like this and uh, West Virginia and Pitt, Texas and Texas and Texas A&M, I'm going forever. Have uh, have stopped or, or ended because of uh, conference realignment. So I hopefully I think I hope they keep this thing going along. Brett, what's been the biggest off-season college football story in your opinion? Well, I think it's a no-brainer. I think can the national champs repeat? Can UCF win another national title? No, I'm kidding. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, you know. I don't know necessarily, but I think the thing, obviously there's been a lot of talk about the graduate transfer rule, what's going to happen with that, different things, which I don't want to go down that rabbit hole. Kind of from a bigger picture, what I'm most looking forward to this year is is, is Michigan. Um, Jim Harbaugh, the expectations are sky high again. Uh, Vegas has Michigan, I think, in the top five as far as best odds to win the national title, and he still hadn't finished higher than third in the division. Is this the year they finally break through? He's got Shea Patterson at quarterback. You know, is he finally going to deliver on those expectations? And also, there's just a lot of fascinating new coaches across the country. I mean, Herm Edwards, I know him well from my days at ESPN. I freaking love the guy. He is tremendous. I hope he succeeds at Arizona State, but that's going to be fun to watch. Chip Kelly at UCLA. Um, can he renew the magic he had at Oregon? Um, or is Quite simply, it has a lot of schools and defenses caught up with what he did, which was kind of a, he was ahead of the game there. And uh, a guy that worked with Chip at Oregon, Scott Frost, he goes to Nebraska, the alma mater, you know, talk about big expectations there. But I think they'll give him a long leash there. And uh, certainly if he succeeds, I think he'll be there a very, very long time. Brett, BYU's coming off a 4-9 and nine season. Vegas has the Cougars right around five, five and a half wins this upcoming season. What's your opinion on this upcoming BYU football team? You know, I, obviously, it's there's a reason um, they have all those big buildings in Vegas. But I think I think that the win total is pretty pretty accurate because it's right. I think where it should be. Uh, I don't think BYU is would get to eight wins. I don't think they're going to be around three or four wins. I think they'll be in that five, six, seven range. You know, when you look at the schedule, you know, by the way, did, did BYU join the Pac-12 since we talked last? I'm looking at their schedule. We wish, four, Brett. Four or five, yeah, four or five games against the Pac-12. And then you got Boise, who's, you know, considered, if not the top, one of the top two uh, group of five teams this year. Um, so you look at those games and, you know, pretty much they're probably going to be an underdog in all those games. So you're looking at being an underdog off the bat in, in half of your games right away. So if you don't pull off any upsets, then you've got to run the table in the games you're supposed to win to get to a bowl game. Uh, certainly last year, I think, was a, was a step backward. If, you know, as you guys know, those know this a lot better than I did. Um, you know, the struggles offensively hurt. Um, you know, it's just, you know, BYU's in a tough position. And, uh, you know, I know they, they made the move to being an independent when they made the move, I thought it was a smart move, but then it just conference realignment happened like overnight, and all of a sudden, it it made the 
the sledding tougher for BYU as an independent. And I just wonder, I've really never had a chance to ask any of the players this. You guys may have or, or may somewhere down the road, just kind of what their mindset is for the season, because basically it's national title or bust. Um, because if you, if you get the six wins, if you get the 10 wins, you're going to go to the same bowl game, um, whatever bowl game that's going to be. Um, and so there, there really isn't that incentive of a conference championship. Um, certainly it's not, it's not realistic for probably 125 schools to think they have a chance to win the national title. So once you lose that second game, you know, that's no longer a carrot dangling out there. So I think that's one of the biggest challenges. And, you know, last year, every, every team has their down years. And obviously that was one for BYU last year. The key though now is for them to bounce back and then obviously get back into the postseason. Brett McMurphy, uh, college football insider, is on BYU Sports Nation. Yeah, conversations with some of the former players, Brett, is, is right there. It's like, yeah, once we lost that second game, it was like, well, what now? And none of the current players will really weigh on, in on it, honestly, but former players have said as much. And I've thought this about the schedule, and, and our fan base is probably getting me tired of going to this, but I feel like the schedule is just too tough for BYU. If BYU doesn't finish ranked, I'm not sure that they can be quantifiably relevant. So why not, instead of play five to seven power fives, why not play three or four uh, and then three or four good G5s and then three or four winnable games uh, at that point? Is there any street cred for BYU if they play this tough schedule but they, they don't win enough? <clears throat> yeah, I mean, there may be, but street cred's not worth anything. To be honest, I mean, you're either in the college football playoff or you're not. That's the reality of college football now. And obviously, when beat with BYU scheduling up like that, if they win those games, then they have a shot to get to the college football playoff. If they lose those games then they have no shot. And then, like you mentioned, when you're talking with past players, once you lose that second game, there's no incentive as far as, well, you know, if we win more games, we're going to go to, to a better bowl game. It, it, every school that's in a conference, you know, you know that if you win nine games, you're going to go to a better location than if you win six games. Um, but with BYU being an independent and having to secure their, their bowl games before the season or having ESPN help them out, um, it it really doesn't matter if they're six and six or they're nine and three or ten and two. They're they're going to the same location. Um, you know, I I I give them credit for trying to schedule up, to schedule as many tough games as they can. But you know, you look at this year and it's like, you know, I hope I hope you guys stay healthy because after the first five weeks, if you guys get beat up, you know, I don't know what you're going to have left for the the second half of the season. The good news is. The second half of the season's a lot, lot easier than the first half. But that you know, you guys could argue you have the toughest, uh, you know, September stretch of anybody in the country. You know, when you have road games at Arizona, at Wisconsin, at Washington. I mean, at w Wisconsin and Washington are two teams that I think can end up in the college football playoff, and BYU's on the road in both of them. Former BYU coach Bronco Mendenhall has been in the news over the last couple of days. What do you make of his comments in regards to scheduling at Virginia? That he was honest and he was made the comments in a public setting and maybe he regrets making those at a public setting. Maybe he doesn't. I mean, you guys, you guys know Bronco. Um, I mean, he's, he was honest. I think what he said is what a number of coaches think is that if I've got to play a power five and I'm in a power five conference and I'm already playing eight or nine, you know, conference games, then yeah, do I want my, do I want my non-conference game against Alabama or Clemson? No, I want it against the other end of the spectrum, you know, Kansas or, or Virginia for that fact. Um, you know, you don't, you don't want to play those hard games every week because you just can't, you can't survive. And then also when you look around the landscape, you know, there's some debate and I would agree with it that, you know, they said to get in the college football playoff, it's based on how you schedule. Well, the committee has been inconsistent on that. And, you know, for instance, last year, Ohio State had a better non-conference schedule. It won a conference championship. Uh, then Alabama's non-conference schedule. Then uh, Alabama certainly didn't win a conference championship, yet Alabama got in the playoffs. So I, I, I'm i sure what Bronco said, a lot of other coaches think it. He's just 
one of the few that has actually said it in a public setting or it got out on the record. And he's one to be frank, as we learned uh, <laughs> when he was here. Brett McMurphy is on BYU Sports Nation. Yesterday, you tweeted that in 2020, pending approval, there will be three new bowl games bringing the total to 43. Is there a point of saturation, or is this about making some dollars? You know, I've <clears throat> excuse me, I've gone back and forth on this. I know there are too many bowl games at this point. I'm just like, you know what? Just we, everybody cares about the college football playoff, and if you're not in that, then if they want to have 70 bowls, have 70 bowls. I don't think it really matters. Um, you know, pe- bottom line is people are going to watch them, um, you know, and there's nothing <laughs> nothing else going on in, in the month of December um, other than Christmas shopping. So if you want to watch them, fine. If, if you think there are too many bowl games, then simply don't watch them. Um, you know, this, this, one of the things that the NCAA Competition Committee and the Oversight Committee has done is they have taken the four-year historical average of number of bowl-eligible teams per conference, and they have capped that number. So that's actually why we're getting three more games, because based on how many bowl-eligible teams there have been in the past four years, that would support 84 bowl teams. That's 43 bowls, not including the conference, or excuse me, including the conference, or excuse me, championship, the national title game. So you would need 84 teams. Um, you know, I really don't have a problem with it. I know a lot of people do, but, you know, I'll sit there and watch it. And one of the best examples is a few years ago, Duke and Butler uh, played in one of the best college, regular season college basketball games ever in December. And the same day, Arizona played New Mexico in the New Mexico Bowl. And it was, I think that was a six and six, two six and six football teams. And the football ratings doubled the, the basketball ratings. So that just tells you what, what the, where the interest lies. Brett McMurphy's on BYU Sports Nation. Brett, we appreciate the time. Great, great insights, and we uh, hope to chat with you soon. Okay, thanks, guys. Brett McMurphy on the Deseret First Credit Union Hotline. Deseret First, your values, your timeline, your financial future.